<clears throat> Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Andrew Young. I'm a computer scientist at Sandia National Laboratories. Today, I'm going to talk about supercontainers and perhaps what I see as the future of HPC. As Christian was so generous enough to put, me, put this talk at the absolute end of uh, the Outlook session, uh, I'm going to try to be rather uh, forward-looking in much of this talk, uh, not only talking in the exascale sense, but potentially beyond that. And hopefully this will generate some interesting discussion for the panel. So short term, obviously, from the US perspective, we have the Exascale Computing Project, or ECP. Today, we're at Petascale, perhaps with the new Fugaku system from our colleagues in Japan. Uh, we are bordering Exascale. Uh, and this is, a, this is a pretty significant jump. And it is necessitated by some really uh, critical computational requirements spanning a wide array of scientific disciplines. So ECP is this multi-laboratory uh, uh, multi DOE-wide effort uh, that really focuses on three sort of uh, areas, applications, developing exascale applications, uh, the software technologies that are needed, and the hardware enablement and integration of all of those components together. Uh, ECP is meant to culminate uh, with three exascale machines deployed at, at different facilities. You have Aurora in 2021 at Argonne, Frontier in 2022 at Oak Ridge, and El Capitan in 2023 at Livermore. So within ECP, we've created this super containers effort. And this is an effort spread across several labs uh, that I've mentioned, as well as a couple of university power. Uh, university collaborators as well. And really here, the idea is to uh, ensure that our container runtimes will be scalable, interoperable, and well integrated across the DOE. And really what we're looking to do is try to deliver on this notion of being able to de deploy containers anywhere from my laptop all the way to the first exascale system. Um, and really being able to assist some of our first exascale applications on using and leveraging containers most effectively and efficiently. This, uh, we've, we've put together a threefold approach for accomplishing this. Uh, first and foremost, focusing on sort of scalable R&D activities, primarily focused around our container runtimes, uh, enabling that uh, certain capabilities and features as necessary to ensure that we can have a application launch, a capability class application launch at something that looks like Exascale. Uh, we're also working heavily with co and collaborating with, with other projects with an ST and AD, uh, really to broader the entire ECP ecosystem. And I'll, I'll talk a little more about some of this in a second. And we also have training and outreach uh, efforts. Uh, previously at SC19, we did a half day tutorial on using containers. Uh, this was expanded to a full day uh, tutorial session for ISC20, but sadly, due to COVID-19 and my UPS going off. Right. Due to COVID-19 and my uh, batteries failing, uh, <laughs> we had to uh, postpone this uh, tutorial activity for ISC. So all of these activities within supercontainers are conducted in the context of interoperability. Uh, we really need portable solutions and we need to work well with multiple uh, container uh, engines. We're not interested in picking a winning container runtime. We're interested in making sure they all work and are uh, well integrated across the DOE. So one thing I want to first highlight is the E4S, or Extreme Scale Scientific Software Stack. Uh, this is a really a community effort to provide open source packages that are of importance for the first Exascale platforms, uh, and really focusing on developing, deploying, and running our scientific applications in a consistent manner. They're tested for interoperability and portability across multiple architectures, and that will continue. And generally, we're leveraging some of the key features in SPAC to make this happen. At the end of the day, this is starting to look a lot like a software distribution model and almost a, a full operating system and programming environment for Exascale HPC. In this, we provide uh, several container uh, builds that you can use and you can get from e4s.io, and many of which are on Docker Hub already. 
Another thing I want to highlight as part of this project is this focus recently on unprivileged container builds. Uh, this is an important, uh, this has recently become really important for us as the ability to build directly on say a login node or a compute node of a supercomputer is, is uh, a critical new feature for us. Many of these systems pre exascale or potentially exascale are not going to be CPU only x86 platforms. They're going to be more diverse and we need to be able to support uh, those the uh, building of containers directly on those on those systems. This also can provide a fundamental building block for CI CD pipelines. So some of our initial explore, exploration is use Podman and being and being able to leverage some of the user namespace features to, to ensure that Podman stays unprivileged. Uh, to build a full programming environment, say the Yatsi or the E4S software stack, as well as an entire application suite directly on my login node. From here, I will push this to GitLab container registry service and be able to import and build that, uh, build a SIF image using Singularity, pulling directly from GitLab, and then being able to deploy it with Singularity and Slurm on, say, 2,000 no nodes in this example. Uh, this is used today with our Astro system, which is an uh, ARM 64 based platform. So, which obviously my laptop. Uh, doesn't doesn't really support from a container build standpoint at this time. So I mentioned CI pipelines, and I want to sort of give a quick little view of this. I believe Eduardo uh, referenced this slide, which of course I'm regurgitating from some previous talk. And the idea here is that we want a developer to be able to generate a container build from a, a pull request or a merge. And uh, so that, you know, these containers are then used to test and integrate code on target exascale uh, hardware. So this could just be a simple push to a Git repo, which then triggers some CI activities that goes and builds a container, builds the SPAC and pulls from a SPAC binary, um, binary mirror and builds a complete container image of the code that, that I care about, my, my exascale application. This can be saved. Uh, or multiple images can be built and then saved in the container registry. And then on demand, they can be deployed directly on say a test cluster or potentially a full exascale platform. This is a, we think, well, while there's still a lot of plumbing and, and details to be worked out here, uh, we think this is a really powerful notion for enabling the next generation of DevOps for HPC software. That being said, we're still kind of playing uh, peekaboo and we're playing games with our HPC platforms. Uh, this is a, a growing gripe of mine because I don't think Exascale fundamentally, while we have some new container capabilities, Exascale doesn't look fundamentally different than Petascale or Ter Terascale before it. Really what we need to do is take a better look, stop playing games and actually get serious about looking further into the future. What, what should HPC systems look like five years from now? So everybody keeps saying Moore's Law is dead, Denard scaling has ended several, several years ago, and maybe we'll start to believe them. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a significant question of how serious are they. Um, even if this happens, uh, I, you know, which I honestly think will be driven more by the cost of exascale and the cost of some of these systems more than our computational capabilities themselves in terms of transistor counts. Uh, however, HPC will still exist. I expect it to potentially evolve, maybe in one of two ways or, or both ways. I'm expecting extremely heterogeneous uh, platforms. And I don't mean nodes, I mean platforms with really diverse architectures. Uh, this is more than just slapping some GPUs on my, on my cluster. I really think we're gonna see some extremely uh, heterogeneous systems. I also think that the need for on-demand um, workloads that can be able to support capability class ensembles are going to be a, a, a important future feature. Uh, this is more than just running big simulations. This is more than just executing your uh, deep neural net training algorithm. This is definitely not the edge. So for the eagle-eyed viewer, uh, that's actually not uh, more. That's actually Robert Denard. So fun fact there. All right, wait, I just went way off on the future of HPC. We're supposed to be talking about containers here. I think 
due to these changes in HPC, uh, they're really gonna, these systems are really going to have to demand the flexibility that containers provide from a software standpoint. And in that, we really need to start thinking more on, on changing what and how we schedule and orchestrate on these platforms. The batch isn't really working. We've made it work for many decades now, but I don't think this is the, what we really want to move forward with in the future. Uh, that being said, I don't think Kubernetes is the answer out of the box. This is not a lift and shift solution. Um, I think it's going to take a lot more work in developing really fundamentally new uh, scalable and orchestration services that can support a uh, capability class workload ensemble. So with that, we're starting to really uh, see a vision where containers are this singleton or basic unit for scheduling on. From here, we can in, you know, create entire workflow ensembles. This, this lends credence to some of Bill's discussion from yesterday. And I think our workflows are going to be just as diverse as the hardware in which they operate on. I think we're going to see a, demand, uh, a requirement for on-demand functionality, um, as well as the ability to still queue system, queue up work when it isn't yet necessary to execute or there isn't enough computational resources currently available. These two things do not need to be mutually exclusive. It is not a batch versus the cloud world. Uh, I think we can design a system and an orchestration service that will work for both. Uh, our HPC nodes are getting fat, just like me during COVID-19. Uh, let's make better use of them uh, and, and try to be able to potentially multiplex or leverage all parts of the silicon concurrently. Uh, I think our containers are really need, gonna need to expand to adapt to these extremely diverse hardware components. We need to be able to support workflows that'll span CPUs, GPUs, custom ASICs, deployed on smart NICs, et cetera, et cetera. And I think uh, some of the CI pipeline uh, work that's being done and hopefully will be continued in the future are gonna be the on-wrap for these custom architectures. So hopefully that provides a uh, controversial and uh, hopefully maybe, maybe insightful uh, vision for where I see uh, HPC and containers evolving beyond just exascale and really over the next decade. So with that, I will conclude and we'll start the panel session. Thank you very much.